Hello, once again, you're watching UTV Live tonight. South Sudan is the world's newest country. It declared independence from the rest of Sudan in 2011. But now it's embroiled in a bloody ethnic conflict. In a moment, I'll be talking to the local aid worker, David Adams, who's just returned from the region. But first, this report from Peter Cardwell. What started as a political dispute between South Sudan's president and his former deputy has now escalated into full-scale conflict with some of the fighting along ethnic lines. The UN says the fighting has claimed up to 10,000 lives and has displaced about 860,000 people since mid-December. Malakal has been at the centre of clashes and has repeatedly changed hands. Local aid worker Davy Adams from Lisburn was in Malakal recently with the Irish charity Goal. It was too dangerous for him to shoot any film during his stay, but he was able to take photographs of the devastation and some of the people he met. This is Sarah and her three-month-old baby. She fled the fighting and lost her sister in the chaos. Her aunt Sintayo is eight months pregnant. She fears for her unborn child after running miles to escape the killings. 17-year-old Julia saw her father, a policeman, lying dead in the street as she fled from Malakal. Former shopkeeper Peter says the bodies of the dead were left in the streets and eaten by dogs. South Sudan's fragile ceasefire, agreed last month, has been violated many times and every day brings reports of new atrocities, heaping yet more pressure on traumatised people. Peter Cardwell, UTV Live tonight. Davy Adams from Goal is with me in the studio. Davy, you have visited several war zones and disasters. Yeah. How does this compare? Well, each war zone has its, has its different uh, different elements to it, Paul. But it's 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 a pretty bad situation in South Sudan. There's no doubt about that. As always in these situations, um, it's the innocent people who are suffering the most. Goal has had a long time presence in South Sudan. We've been there from 1998, um, and we we have an extensive. Primary healthcare program, 46, 46 primary healthcare units we, we run, and the beneficiaries 500,000. Um, and the plight of some of these people has really touched you. It's it touched it, it really has. Um, Gold staff, in fact, in Malakia, the place, one of the worst hit places in in South Sudan. In fact, they had to flee to to a local camp um, for in, internally displaced people from the city of Malakal, like, like the rest of the population of that city. So it, it's, it's particularly touching when your own staff are affected so badly as well. How difficult is it for gold to operate in the country? Uh, as I say, we've been there since 1998, so we're well experienced in South Sudan and, and, we, and we know the implications of the place and the different, different uh, dynamics. But it can be difficult at times. Um, yeah, it can be difficult. I understand too that a lot of these families are displaced and separated from their own kith and kin. Of course, I mean the whole the whole city of Malakal um, fled because uh, the 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 city kept changing hands between the opposing forces, and each time it changed hands, there was a, an ethnic bloodbath. So uh, eventually, the population fled, and they fled to a UN base nearby. Or Thirty thousand of them did, uh, and it's a very common. Uh, story that people in the in the panic and, and the confusion of running from the city got separated from their from their kith and kin. Some of the people hid in the bush and were reunited a few days later with their family, but many are missing, uh, presumed dead. In Just fact, one of our own drivers, uh, a fella I'm very friendly with, he his young sister that just happened to her. He she she and the mother got separated. Um, she's only eight and she hasn't been heard of since. Just a, a final question for you. You'd be aware of our own local difficulties politically. Yeah. You have a background in politics here in Northern Ireland, but what you're doing now is a world away from this. Yeah, and I must say I don't miss anything uh, in that respect at home. I mean, um, I'm totally engaged with, with Gold's work and that's my full interest now. I have no, I have no interest in politics of any type. <laughs> Debbie Adams, thank you very much. Thanks, Paul.